name is R. Wesley Bender, and I was born in St. Louis, Missouri. 1949, so I'm 65 right now. Everybody works at a cigarette factory. I got on R.J. Reynolds Tobacco Company and worked, and my job was tearing up Salem cigarettes that failed the inspection. Well, while I was in the job, I got this draft card 1A, and, and my buddy left, my buddy got called, and another friend got called, and the Tet Offensive just happened in, Viet in Vietnam. I was, what the heck? You know, people were getting killed, and so, yeah. Well, it looks like we're going. So I went to the Air Force. I'm going to beat this. So I went to the Air Force. I want to work on jets. They laughed at me because they had two notebooks, and that was the waiting list, two notebooks thick. So I went to the Army, and they had, they don't have jets. I said, I want to work on jets. Well, we got helicopters. No, a jet engine. No, I want to work on jets. So I gave the Army up. I went to the Navy. You got a jet? Yeah. But I want to work on them. Oh, we can't. You know, I had an honest recruiter is what I had. We can't guarantee you what you're going to get. Well, I want jets. We can't. Went to the Marine Corps. I forgot about the Marine Corps. Went to the Marine Corps. Hey, we had aviation guarantee. Want to work on jets? You bet. And boot camp in 68 in the Marine Corps was, was a little tough. But I was going to make it. I was going to make this and prove people wrong. You know, get my wish of working on jets. The very last day of boot camp, they read the MOSs off. They go, Bender, yep, here's your MOS, 0800, artillery. Is, is that jets? No, it's artillery, now sit down. And, and I just sat there. What's, what am I gonna do? So I just made the best of it, but yeah, I went, I was crushed. I had to go to, Marine Corps has another boot camp they don't tell you about. As soon as boot camp's over, you get on a bus and you go to boot camp some more up in Camp Geiger, North Carolina. It, it was tough. I mean, marching, force marches. And that's where you learn to shoot machine guns and throw grenades and all that. They don't do that in boot camp in the Marine Corps. Marine Corps, you march, march, march. The Marine Corps has the best... Uh, I'm not bragging because I'm in the Marines. They have the best marksmanship training there is. You're there for two weeks, and it's nothing but marksmanship. From machine guns to 50 cal, we shot the bazooka, you know, the older type stuff. Then we were headed to our school. I got, I got two weeks of leave, or 20 days leave, and then off to Camp Pendleton, California for schools. Started artillery school, and a month later, and, and that was fun. It was it was hard because they were still making you do lots of physical fitness stuff, but we had uh, learned to shoot the cannon. And the cannon happened to be a 105 millimeter howitzer, which is the same gun I ended up being on in Vietnam. And to shoot the 105, the bullet, which we slang, that's what we call it, we put the on a canister of seven powder bags to adjust when you're an artilleryman, you do nothing whatsoever except what you're told. If you shoot all the bags, the round goes way far. If you shoot one bag, you're shooting right across the hilltop. You, the executive officer that's on duty, is he's, he's on the phone or the radio to the fire direction center, which has this mission planned out. And the forward observer, which is a poor guy that's stationed with the infantry, he usually picks the mission. He has a map and he says, we have a um, target and this is the spot it's at on the map. And they know how far it is. They know what charge to make it go that far. And then after that was boot camps. More training for that. It was for it was for staging for Vietnam, so we learned about booby traps and and uh, a lot of things that they would do in Vietnam. We learned about foreign weapons and what to say when the, uh, if you're captured and all that stuff that went with the with the uh, training. Right after staging, the we had a day had a day off for Christmas. So the day after Christmas, the plane 
We got on buses and went up to El Toro, and we're on the jet by midnight. <clears throat> got to Okinawa about in that morning, which we missed today because of the dateline. <clears throat> so we were in Okinawa. It was very calm. I mean, there was nothing. We wasn't afraid of nothing. We kind of let's go with this thing. We we landed at the, in Da Nang. The first night, they told us they were worried about incoming. What's that? Rockets. You know, they can shoot rockets at the lights. So they made us go into these bunkers. And they're nothing but sandbags and sand. And they had a little cot in there. That's where I spent the night. And it opened up to the runway. You ever heard Phantom F-4s go down the runway and kick in their afterburners? It's the loudest noise a jet can make. My battery was in the 11th Marine, so I didn't know what that meant. but. We had to go to Leveth Marine headquarters, and uh, they were stationed there for a day. And then they said, you're going to be in the 1st Battalion of the 11th Marine. So then the next day we went to battalion headquarters. The first, that was the first time I was put on guard duty out in, the, out in the... We weren't issued any weapons yet, but they were given, given one and you went out there and you stood all night wondering what was going to happen and nothing happened and then the next day got on a truck clear out to about 17 miles bad road to my battery and there i was and when i got there they were just filling a million sandbags so i had a lot of sandbag duty on the very first week i was there i was an alpha battery the first battalion 11th marines and we were in quang Quangnam province, and it was about 17 miles south of Da Nang. It was raining a lot, and the battery had a lot of mud, but it was not flooded. The howitzer's towed, so there's two tires on it. Very common looking cannon, and the spades are in the ground. Well, when you fire, they, they automatically dig themselves a hole if you're not, if you don't dig it. Well, it's so, it's been fired so much, the ground is so loose that you can just drop the spades in the ground, hardly have to dig. You don't have to dig. It just needs to go in the ground. But when it's raining and it's flooded, that floods over. And so you can fire it and the spades jerk or jump. And it's just like you clapping your hands in a pool. It, it can get everybody wet. <laughs> Splash right out of the... So yeah, you can get wet. At nighttime, the... Uh, we have a lot of missions that's called H&Is, harassment and interdiction. And that's, those are targets chosen by infantry or someone and say, hey, this is where they've been, make a target note, and we'll have a battery fire three rounds there three times a night. So duty gun has to fire three rounds for this target, and there's usually a half dozen to a dozen targets. It was harassing the enemy because they were in a certain location, seen in the daytime. So the uh, intent was to blow them up when they're there doing something. And it it might have worked, it might have not, but it did harass them. It, you, you wouldn't know when they were going to get a round in their head. We had uh, rounds that didn't that failed to fire. That that scares you because you have to wait so long before you know that it's not going to cook off or something like that. And then after you shoot it, you got to clean up the canisters. And then after you clean it up, you got to stack them. And the next morning, you have to throw the canisters on the truck to go to Da Nang, and you throw the boxes on the truck to go to the dump. And then every day there's a ammo run. You know, we hit one where the it was buried in the road. Fortunately, the when it blew up, it was so deep that it just rang our bell. It didn't break us. But going to the Nang was always a, an adventure to get more ammo. The most craziest night was another battery. We were an A battery. B battery was being overrun, so they called artillery in on herself, basically. 
our battery, I was fortunate, a battery was in this position for 16, 18 months. As soon as I left Vietnam, they went, they went and packed up and, and went to another hill. So it was a scary time because they didn't have any idea where they were going and what they were doing. The other battery, C battery, they were fly by night. They came and set up in our area and were there three or four days and was gone. And the ammo and their own personal stuff and sleeping arrangements and showers, all that stuff, they didn't get much of. Our shower was a big tank set up in the on four telephone poles. You had to fill it by five gallon jerry cans and a water trailer. And then to keep to get water warm, some guy put a old cook's immersion burner in the bottom of it and burn it and the water was lukewarm. It was it got by you get wet. You have, always had a navy shower. That means on, get wet, off, soap up, on, rinse, off. We ate and we worked so hard, our little bodies were, we get hungry. And we had tears in our eyes at night because we were so hungry sometimes. But then they issued us sea rashes. And then we'd get a case of them and mix and match and make a fun time of it. When you're on the gun, everybody has to take their, usually to have a poncho liner or a blanket. And I call it my binky. I take my binky out to the gun and then you try to just lay down. And we lay on the floor, we'd lay on the bunker. Out of the year I was there, I don't think there was a night that didn't have some sort of action. We fired something every night. The best was having the first shift because you get up at 12.30 and you go in and sleep from 12.30 till, till dawn. And that firing, that firing cannon, you can sleep right through that. You can never bother you in the least after a while. One day there was a formation. In the afternoon, it was early in the afternoon. That's strange. And then there was a semi came with a, a lot of ammo on it. And then there was a jeep with that came with a lieutenant colonel and some sergeant had more stripes than the PX. And what it was is we had inert ammo. You take the back of the ammo off and you stuff the bullet full of paper. And all this paper said, these little flyers, was propaganda. Now we've seen a lot of propaganda fall out of the sky up through planes dumping it. So we put, and here's the Marines, you know, what Marines do, get their pen out. Ho Chi Minh sucks and, you know, Captain Green is a dumb guy. And, we write all this vulgar stuff on the paper and then pull it. Take the back of the bullet off, load the paper in, and fire it. So we fired it. Bang! You talk about a short round. The back of the bullet, the bullet went down range. The back of it fell off in the parapet. <sighs> Trash all over. And I'll be a damn if Captain Green didn't find one of his vulgar stories. Yep, the mail came. Mail was... Mom would send cookies. Sometimes she'd send something else. We'd get things in them. Everybody got, every time you got food in the mail, you shared it. I came home. I saw my folks. My dad laughed because he'd find me wandering around in the middle of the night in the house. Shouldn't you be asleep? Oh, I can't sleep. I couldn't sleep uh, regular for a long time after that. Anyway, I went back and was stationed with the 10th Marines at Camp Lejeune, and then we had a had to go on a fire mission or a fire exercise to uh, Viegas, Puerto Rico, and it was it was wonderful. They gave us Marines a tent down at a on a lagoon in in the Caribbean. What more do you want? I was in the Azores in '71 and this plane landed in the Azores, said West Virginia Air National Guard on it. And I stumbled, what in the world is that doing here? And I said, I, had, I went and got an airman that was on the plane. Well, he would immediately kick me in the shin. How's that damn Marine Corps treating you? 
he kind of took me back, and then he says, I just got out of the Marines a few months ago. You're in the Air Force, yeah. I got this deal. I went to, back to Morgantown, West Virginia, where I'm from. There's an air base there. I went out there and joined the Air Guard, and I'm a National Guard technician, full-time at the air base, working on jets. How in the world? Well, you can go back and go to the Air Guard. Now, I don't think we have Air Guard in Iowa. Well, you can do the Army Guard, same thing. And that's when I planned my career. That moment, I'm going to be a National Guard technician. And so exactly what I did. I got on, still here.